killing it today, guys. I'm gonna get dizzy. We are? We're rolling. Yeah. What's up? Morning, Trainiacs. Day one in San Diego, and man, I might have had the single best sleep I've ever had and the single best shower I've ever had. I did not feel like a human after that day of travel. So yeah, I needed a lot of sleep yesterday. Eight and a half hours. Eight and a half hours is like tippy top of the range of what I'll sleep. Killing it today, guys. We have a really unique, fun, legendary thing coming up at lunch today. Get to meet somebody that makes dreams come true in triathlon. I'm not kidding, this is big. I put out the feeler for it a couple weeks ago. Dude said yes, I'm like, oh. I think there's a little kiddie pool in the Airbnb that I'm staying at, so go for a little shakeout swim in a bit. Well, this here might be the smallest pool that I've ever tried to swim laps in. One. We're talking about a 10, 11 yard pool. I'm gonna get dizzy. All right, I got my swim on, got my shower on, got my breakfast on. Gotta go to one workshop and check in for social media week. No, social media marketing world. Getting these confused. And then, guest appearance by a legend. I should have my sunglasses on. We're in San Diego. Can I do that on camera? Absolutely. Huh? We can do whatever we want. So for the four people out there that might not know who this is, do you want to introduce <laughs> yourself, Mike? Introduce myself? I promised a legend. Report to Matt number three, Mike Riley, in the 149 pound weight class. Two time NCAA national champion, Wisconsin Badger, hockey player, Micah, you are Hi everybody, it's Mike Riley. Aloha. The voice of Iron Man. If you have followed Iron Man, especially Kona at all, you know that Mike has announced how many people across the finish lines of Iron Man races over the last 30 years. Oh gosh. I think the number was around 330 to 40,000. 330 to 40,000? Done over a thousand endurance events, the 5Ks. 10Ks, marathons, I mean, it's just, it adds up pretty quick. So, let's ask a few of the questions that I'm sure you get asked a lot. What's your favorite race to call besides Kona? Honestly, my most favorite race is always the Ironman I am at. Uh, I have favorite places and, and favorite venues I like to go to. Ironman New Zealand is, is no doubt one of my favorites. Uh, Iron Man Lake Placid is no doubt one of my huge favorites. But it's interesting, people always ask me that and and while I like those communities and love them, I love Iron Man Mont Blanc. I did Frankfurt one year, I just cannot believe the amount of spectators out, but it's really that Iron Man I'm at. That's my favorite one. So I guess they're all my favorites. We did talk about this, but you didn't give me the answer earlier. What's the most memorable finish that you've announced over 30 years? Most was, memorable finisher. Before 2013, it was very difficult to answer that, but when my son Andy did his first Ironman in 2013 at Ironman Arizona, and the anticipation of calling him in, saying to myself, just keep it together. I don't know if anything's ever gonna top me bringing him in. At what point did announcing the race start becoming a thing that you were the guy? for Iron Man? It's a tough question to answer. I don't like being thought of as the guy. <laughs> to me, it's all about the athletes in the event. Y you'll never hear me say two words on race day, and that's I or me, because I feel that just puts you in a different frame of mind uh, about what your quote-unquote job is to do that day. You know, I don't look at myself as the, the people want to say stuff about me or they say things to me. It's very gratifying. It's very humbling. I think when you think and you believe that you're number one and you, you, that's what it's all about, then that's what you portray when you speak. And it's not about, the, the only number one thing for me uh, on race day is the athletes and the event. What's going on in your head in that, let's say that last hour before midnight? Oh, I, I, you know, giving, giving the athletes their just due, if, 
of trying to keep that crowd going after such a long, long day. Uh, I know they're tiring out too. You know that they have been out there longer than everybody. They could have been a 12-hour athlete that something happened and they got to walk in. It could have been, you know, the, the the mother of two that battled breast cancer that was told that, you know what, just take care of yourself, you'll be okay. But she wanted to be something more special. It, it, it's that it's that father that wants to teach their kids anything is possible. I, there's so much going through my mind. And everyone that comes in, I want to make sure they receive what they deserve. I don't know if you know this, but there have been people that in their descriptions on Twitter and on Instagram say that their goal is to be announced by you at a, a finish line. And you touch a lot of people. Has anyone surprised you and really touched you? Oh, <laughs> when I look in their eyes, I see their hearts. I, I feel their souls. I, I know a lot of their backstories of what they have gone through to get to the finish line. And each and every one touches me. I, I, and the tough part is I have to be touched for a moment because I've got another one coming in to take care of. If the world could be at an Ironman finish line, if the entire world could physically be in an Ironman finish line, whether it be Kona or Australia or Lake Placid or Frankfurt or wherever, if they could be at that finish line and see the passion that comes across that line in the final three or four hours, this would be an incredibly different world in an instant. What are the top three moments? You know, when, when Sarah Reinerson finished as the first female amputee to finish Ironman uh, after not finishing the year before and missing the bike cutoff, that's, that's a huge moment. When back in the day, professional football player Daryl Haley, he was an offensive lineman for New England, played in the Super Bowl. He was this huge guy. And I remember being in Kona in June or July of that year and he was there training and I met with him and I, I remember seeing him standing next to his bike and his quads were as, they, they were as wide, wide as a car tire. <laughs> he, I'm going, this dude, he, he's not gonna finish Iron Man. <laughs> but part of me says, we gotta have an NFL, ex-NFL guy, this will, put it out there to so many other people that could possibly finish this race. So when he finished, I gone, somebody threw him a football and he threw it back in the crowd. I go, now that's a, that was a moment. Uh, George Yoda, I haven't thought about him. And you mentioned, I haven't thought, he was out of Long Beach, California. And he finished the race one year in 16, 59, 59. As a matter of fact, his foot hit the mat with only like six one hundredths of a second before it was, you know, he wouldn't have finished. So I, I could go through and talk for hours on the memorable moments. There, there can't be a top three. They're just our top memorable moments. Well, what's next? Where, where do you want the Trainiacs is what we call them. Where do you want Trainiacs. them, to, where do you want them to, to find you? Get called by you? Look you up online? Yeah, I, you know, I've got a uh, website, an old one, this, it, it is live, so, and a new one being built, but MikeRiley.net. And you can go there and see some past stories I've done, see my schedule. And we've got a new website coming out in about a month, but MikeRiley.net. Then you can go to my Facebook public page and see what's going on, and, and, uh, or my you know, Twitter or Instagram account at Iron Man Voice. You know, I, I want to make sure do, that your, your audience realizes that, you know, you, I've always been under the mantra, you're, you're, you're the cause of your own experience. And if you always believe that, what's going to happen is you're going to be successful. Sure, there are going to be pitfalls, things come along your way, something could happen medically, something could happen physically that you may have not had control over. But if you always live by you are your own experience, you'll get to the start line, which for a lot of people is Herculean, even compared to the finish line, of getting to that start line. And, and you watch what happens, you'll finish. And that's what I love about our sport because when I see young children at a finish line or I see the kids of the parents that are doing it or their aunts and uncles and we're showing them that if you finish what you start, it all works out. Just finish what you start. And people and your neighbors and, and friends that don't do, they're in awe of you because they go, you swim, you bike, you run? Well. The ones that are doing that now used to think about others in that way, but they decided to take that first step, either to join that you know, triathlon club or to 
uh, you put their foot in a pool that they've never been in before, learn how to swim, and, and I have had hundreds and hundreds and thousands come up to me and say, I couldn't swim mm. 18 months ago. Last time I rode a bike is when I was 16. I'm now 36 doing an Ironman. And you know, it just, it never ends. It's, it's, like, it's like Iron Man is the good never ending story because every story has a backstory which is more inspirational than the last one. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. And the best part is you change the lives of people around you without telling them anything. You're, you're living by action and people read actions a lot better than they hear people's words. Take some actions and you might get announced by this fellow one day. <laughs> Thank you, Just Mike. Just finish. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's All good. right, brother. Thank you very much. Okay. Aloha. We've eaten our Caesar salad and it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs>